It's great to be here. Hi, thank you. Uh, I've been on the road doing comedy for 10 years now, so bear with me while I plaster on a fake smile and plow through this shit one more time. <laughs> and it's magic every show. <sighs> I love being a comedian. It's the greatest job in the world, really. I love the hour, you know, and... Uh... <laughs> the greatest thing about it is I don't have a boss. That's a definite plus in a lifestyle, man. You know, every job I ever had with bosses, I was always harassed. Hicks, how come you're not working? I go, there's nothing to do. <laughs> well, you pretend like you're working. Well, why don't you pretend I'm working? <laughs> yeah. yeah, man, you get paid more than me, you fantasize. <laughs> yeah, I'll pretend I'm mopping. Knock yourself out. <laughs> I'll pretend they're buying stuff. We can close up. <laughs> Love being a comedian, but I hate the travel part of it. Travel sucks. Sitting in airports, sitting on the plane, on the runway, and the plane won't take off. My personal favorite. Frequent waiting. Yeah. <laughs> Telling you, every time I see a hijacking on the news now, I just think to myself, do it. F it. Let's see how far you get. <laughs> <laughs> I paid and didn't get off the ground, man. <laughs> I've thought about that, putting a gun to a pilot's head. That'd feel real good. Just one time. This is a hijacking. Where do you want to go, Cuba? No, I want to go where this plane was supposed to be five hours ago! That's right, I'm hijacking this plane to its scheduled destination. Who's in? Who's in? I've been traveling, I've noticed a certain anti-intellectualism sweeping our world. I find quite frightening. Uh, I was in Nashville, Tennessee last year. After the show, I went to a Waffle House. I'm not proud of it. I was hungry. <laughs> and I'm alone. I'm eating and I'm reading a book, right? Waitress walks over to me. Hey, what you reading for? <laughs> Sound like the weirdest question you've ever heard? <laughs> not what am I reading, but what am I reading for? Well, God damn it, you stumped me. <laughs> Why do I read? Well, hmm. I guess I read for a lot of reasons, and the main one is so I don't end up being a waffle waitress. <laughs> it's fairly high on the list of reasons. But then, this trucker in the next booth gets up, stands over me and goes, Well, looks like we got ourselves a reader. <laughs> <laughs> what the f***'s going on here? It's not like I walked into a Klan rally in a Boy George outfit. God damn it, it's a book. I read. There, I said it. Waitress goes, why read when you can just flip on the tube? Because <laughs> it's not the same. What do you think I'm reading? Hee Haw the Book? So we never have sex anymore, my wife and I, because we have a baby, and our baby is a fucking asshole. Go to work, I can't even have a normal conversation with a female at work. She's like, and yeah, and then Ralph put the files over here. And I'm looking at her, and in my mind, I'm just like, I wish my penis was right here. Time for an intro. Fuck you, technology. Or just an intro. We don't even have to be live. We just do the intro. I'm gonna put my foot up your zero zero. All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the next episode of the Two Studies Podcast. Actually, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to season six. Yeah! Of the yeah. Two Stone Dudes podcast. Also, also, not only that, but I'm more excited. It is our year 
anniversary, ladies and gentlemen. Happy anniversary. Happy awesome. anniversary, everybody. Yeah, happy anniversary. We've been getting lit up and fucking stoned since the pandemic, pretty much. And that's how this podcast spawned, was from the pandemic, because I thought at the time what I was hearing was a lot of misinformation going on, a lot of people being scared, and I just wanted to be part of that, wanted to be part of an outreach of people, and I thought by doing that would be the best way to do it would be a podcast, you know what I mean? And uh, so that way I can reach a, a broader audience and, and find other people's um, feedback on what they thought and, and, and how they thought, and, and that's how this whole thing got bigger you know, um, I ended up asking Rob to come on, and then I finally convinced Kevin, and then Mondo wanted to be our techie and fucking wanted to be a pers- on-air personality, and then Jamie was our final addition, and here we are, a year later, two Stone Dude Podcasts. I am so happy. Thank you guys for being on this journey with me so far. I can't tell you guys how much I appreciate this. This is fucking awesome. I just did a dad... Ba- oh, <laughs> you look really fucking high, Jamie. Like, really high. Fuck yeah. Oh, yeah, she's high. <laughs> so is Rob. High Mondo, high. how are you feeling over there, brother? I'm good. I'm still fucking around with things. I think we might have to start over. That's fine. That's fine. But we this was just a scratch one. Anyway, now, I want Jamie to move more towards that TV screen right there to your uh, right. Yeah, move your chair a little bit in your mic so we can see you. A little more. Yeah, move a little more. Then I'm out of there. That's better. Yeah, it's she's not lot. in this shot, though, but she'll be in that shot. Yeah. The, okay, cool. You'll good. be in at least good. one of the shots. She's good. It's all good. Okay, yeah. so she's good. I'm going yeah. to end this stream, okay, and then we'll start up again in a minute. Remember, there's like a lag. Um, and that's what we've had. We've gone through a bunch of different things. We, uh, we, we even said goodbye to a fucking guy who, from what I found out, was a gangster. After he passed away. Who's the gangster? Carmine, uh, I can't remember his last name, but it was Carmine <clears throat> something or other. Wow. Yeah. And he was on uh, earlier? No, his, uh, well, he was, we almost got sponsored by him. Oh. Well, yeah. Wow. Was, was he less than like Castellucci or something? Sorry, Carmine. <laughs> yeah, uh, man. We weren't in the will. Yeah. We had the fucking, we had that one dickhead Bill on. <laughs> oh, he was so, a winner. He was a piece of work. Yeah, dude. You know, I, I let him. I let him sprout out his fucking we've, you know alt right ideology, bills. and uh, that was cool. Though I enjoyed. It. Yeah, it was all right. <laughs> it was cool to get the other side of the coin. You know what I mean? I thought it was funny as shit. First, yeah. But anyway. Hey, we've, and we've you know who's always fun to have on? Kevin's always fun to have always. on because Kevin brings a uh to the show. Kevin. And I fucking love it when he does it. He's working, right? He working yeah, right Kevin's now. working. That's why yeah. I can't be with So this, this once again, this is our this is the f- first anniversary. This is yes. the one year anniversary awesome. yes, it is. of the Two Stone Dudes podcast. Yes, it is. And it's our sixth season. Yes. All right. We are rolling along. And uh so that's going to be our intro for the first segment of the podcast. Ladies and gentlemen, join us. Um, I'm going to give you a rundown of what we're going to be doing here pretty soon. Sorry, I'm barely talking into the mic. Um, and this is what we got going on. Today, we're going to get an intro to NLP from Mondo Humunculero. Yep. Jamie is going to give the stone recipe of the day. Um, Rob is going to give our news uh, and current events that are going on today. And before all that starts, we're going to have an interview. Am I correct, Mondo? That's correct. All right, we're going to have an interview with a bud tender uh, that Mondo knows. And uh, that should go well. We're going to ask her specifically related questions to that, that type of industry. So we get to know more about it. Plus, there's some questions that I want to ask that... You know, like I'm, I'm kind of confused as to why the price went up, but <laughs> maybe she can help me out. She might be able to help. <laughs> she might be able to help me out. I think, I mean, she knows the things. She, I'm sure that she'll. Be right, 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 yes. right, right. I want my real coupons. Right. So yeah, man, I definitely want some coupons. That'd be awesome. So, ladies and gentlemen, join us on the next segment with our interview. And uh, oh, also, we're gonna be reviewing. Um, we have we did two reviews, uh, one on Army of the Dead that was on Netflix, and the other which was on uh, the Toast of London show, which was fucking insane. I can't wait to tell you guys about that. And that's what's all coming up for you soon. Thank you for joining us. We'll see you soon. What are you gonna talk about? Dick. 
All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the Two Stone Dudes Podcast. We have a surprise guest with us really quick. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, Killer Kevin K, who became part of this podcast roughly around nine months ago. Uh, Kevin, if you don't know, it is our year anniversary today. Okay. As a podcast <laughs> that you've okay. become part of. And, uh, I'm fucking high as fuck when I... <laughs> I uh, do those podcasts, so I don't know what day it is, let alone what month. <laughs> <laughs> nice, nice. Well, just want to tell you that uh, we appreciate you having you on. Um, every little dirt you give us is fucking hilarious, and uh, we love you, and um, we're looking forward to you. We have, uh, what do we got set up for you? For I'm going to look at what I have, what I have right now. Um, Next Saturday. I Next Saturday. Uh, Dabs yeah. versus Flower. That's what yeah. you're going to be talking saw, to us about. Dabs versus text, Flower. I, I saw the text message. Okay, today. cool. That We're going to be looking forward to that because I definitely want a decent report on Dabs versus Flower. In your perspective of it, it should be definitely interesting, if anything, okay. to say the least. Because I know uh, you transition from one to the other and prefer one over the other. And uh, yeah. to hear your perspective on it will definitely be uh, something we all look forward to. Okay. So thank you very much for calling. Oh, we also, if we can get you on, you also might be giving us something about Harry Potter too, huh? No, I'm not going to do that. You're not going to do the no, Harry Potter? No, that's stupid. Ah. Uh, hey, Kev. <laughs> What's uh, up? Kev, this is original line. So uh, how many subscribers can I sign you for for uh, golf magazines? What? Two subscriptions? Hardly... What the fuck did you just say? For two years. You made no goddamn sense whatsoever. And you can't hear you. Dude, you're, you're mumbling like a motherfucker. I am not mumbling like a motherfucker. <laughs> it's just now hard to hear. It's Can just hard you to hear. hear me? Hello? <laughs> Hello? All right, Kev. Yes, Kev, I'm going to cut our call short. Thank you so much Is for calling in. We appreciate it. Hello, sir. I'm trying to talk to him, man. <laughs> me too. <laughs> Kevin, thank you so much for talking to us. How high are you guys, dude? I'm You're so high as fuck. How high is like the Georgia pine? Straight off Cheech and Chong up in smoke. Hey, I'm not Mexican, motherfucker. <laughs> right? Oh, no one you here heard that clear. No one well, here is Chong. named Dave. That's true. Right, man. Dave's not here. All right, Kevin, I'm going to cut it short, brother. Thank you for calling in. I appreciate it. Hi, Kev. We All love right. you, man. Take care. All right, man. Bye. Peace. All right, so... Uh, Mondo, let's get uh let's get our first guest on the line. I gotta get connected here. All right, we are, all right. Yeah. Anyway, so that was our little segment we did with Killer Kevin K, and uh, I'm glad he got the. I'm glad he remembered to call in. It was nice he called. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. It's always good to hear from him. Yeah. Um, I wish he could be here to celebrate with us. I was I was planning on having all of us here at the same time, but unfortunately he had to work. Uh, hey, since ooh. he got his raise and upgrade and oh, yeah, and, uh, and, disconnect and tag. the broadcaster. Okay, I'll do that right now. Yes, thank you. Busy gentleman. Okay. That was very nice of him to come. Yeah, through. absolutely. We love Kevin. We love hearing from Kevin. Yup. And he always has something to say, doesn't he? Yes, he does. Yes, he uh, does. He's God all, damn it. He's always anyway. special. I was totally you know spaced what? out. Like water water he's yeah. special. Anyway. He some water here. Bones. Okay, now we're going to be talking to a very old friend of mine who is a bud tender. And, uh, awesome. I call her Raka. Raka? But you can just call her RC. Okay. Like the soda. It's ringing. Hello? Hi, RC. How's it going? I'm doing well. This is Ryan Castle. How are you today? Good. How are you? Doing well. Doing well. Also on the line, we have Ra the Nod. Hola. And uh, Jamie B. How's it going? And, of course, Mondo Humonculero. So we got we got you on the line. So uh, you're, a bud, you're a bud tender, as we understand. Yes, I am. Sweet. All right, you're going to have to, like, not mind us at all because uh, we're all high as fuck right now. So um, just don't mind us that, like, we can't, like, if, if we space out or... Mess up a question. Don't, yeah. don't mind it at all. We got some I, pretty I good bud. All right, so, real quick. All right, how long have you been a bud tender for? Since the end of January. Okay. What got you interested in the business? Well, my love for cannabis. I've always had a love for cannabis. Most, 
especially after my ACL surgery. Um, I even started loving it even more. Nice, nice. Now, when was the first time you used cannabis? 15 years old. 15, nice. Right on. And I think, I think, all this, I think, I think most people discover it between 13 and 15 years old. Yeah. Yeah, pretty much. Um, now, being on the inside, I, I have I have some questions and I have some gripes and complaints that maybe you can help me out. With, okay. <laughs> now, I completely understand supply and demand, but wouldn't you agree these prices have gone up quite, uh, quite a bit in the last several months? Yeah, for sure. Um, the supply and demand is Thing, but I think um, certain businesses kind of take advantage and use that um, excuse. But I mean, the state is getting so much money with that 16% tax, it's absolute insanity. Right. On top of the 8.6% sales tax. Right. And, you know, I, I'm. it just seems like because it's weed that it, people are just going to take it. They're just going to take it anyway. They're going to pay for it no matter what. They're, nobody's going to fucking complain that much about it to the point where it's going to make a big stink. You know what I mean? Like tobacco. Right. Yeah. They're just gonna yeah. get it. No matter how high cigarettes are going to get, people are going to fucking <clears throat> pay for them. Yep. Right. You know? So anyway. Yeah. So is, do you see yourself going further in this industry, or were you planning on doing something else for a, for a living? Um, I mean... I could see myself. It's just like you got to have a lot of money or have, know an investor to really like make money in this industry when you're in the bottom, like be like a little tadpole. You know, you're really not doing it for the money. You're doing it because you enjoy it. Right. But, um, yeah, I mean, if I could start my own like edible company or something, right. like that would be something um, I would love to do. Now, have you been uh, you've been toying around with that idea, or you've been doing something with it? Oh yeah, I make some RSO rice krispie treats, or um, some distillate infused. Um, I make some plant based ones, some back kid ones. I'll tell you what: if you send us something, we will put you over on our show. And we'll get you all the advertising you want. All right. That's that's definitely a deal on our end here. I speak. For yeah. Technically, the licensing just in general is not that much. Really? Yeah, it can go from three to six hundred dollars. Okay, just on the paperwork, and that's a start. Okay, a foot in the door. Right. Yeah. Right. Right. Right on. Right on. Yeah, you might be able to do that at some point. Yeah. So, what first piqued your interest in cannabis? I'm curious. Was it like was it peer pressure from friends, or was it like were you something you were looking forward to doing? Um, I feel like the plant was just calling my name. Nice. Yes. Yes. Right on. <laughs> That's probably, I was like, come smoke me, man. That, that yes. is probably the best answer I think we've ever had on here so far. I figured she might have a couple like that. Oh, that was So awesome. you know who's coming in August, right? Lamb of the God. That's it. L O G. <laughs> With mega I shit. Can't. With mega shit. Thank you. And trivial. <laughs> oh my <Ooh>. God. Trivial. <laughs> trivial, nice. trivial, yes. Anyways. Yay. Her and I have seen many shows together, right? Yep. For yeah. like 16 years, my concert buddy. Right on, man. It's always cool to have somebody go to concerts with. We yeah. have a blast, don't we? God, so much fun. Mm-hmm. Nice. Mm-hmm. Right on, man. Right on. Okay, so real quick. Um, I don't, I don't need to know your exact age, but are you in the uh, 18 to 25 age range? I'm 31. What? Mm-hmm. Really? Are you short? <laughs> what? Are you short? Are you like tiny? <coughs> I'm a little girl. Okay, because you sound <laughs> okay. Because you sound younger. I thought you were like. I thought you were like in your like early like like late teens, early 20s. I was, I was oh there. really? Yeah, I totally thought I was talking to like a teenager, or like somebody in college. I, I, I forgot you, said, you were thirty-one. Okay, I was when, just somebody was asking me. This. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. Which I wonder. I was like sixteen years. Oh my goddamn minute! Yeah, That's right. right? I was okay. Now I'm, I said this is I'm high, and now I understand things. Okay. <laughs> so I got it. You got it. 
Uh, if you're 31, that means I'm really too <coughs> old to say. Anyway. Nice. <laughs> nice. <laughs> okay. Anyhow, man, it's a shame we couldn't get you in the studio. We'd like to have you in the studio sometime, maybe on another season, and uh, to sit around and smoke with us and bullshit, because that's basically what we do. We sit around, we smoke, and we, we bullshit. And uh, I didn't really have anything prepared as far as, like, a regular, um, oh, a regular uh, what do you call it, <laughs> uh, questions for you. For an interview. So, uh-huh. I just came up with the questions so, that are coming on mine, because I want to see what it was like when I was high. So, so far, so good. Uh-huh. I don't mind, you know? Um, oh, what did you say about that? Ryan's, uh, I, hey, Mondo. Go, I have a question. <laughs> so what would you say is the most significant thing that you convey to customers for their well-being concerning our favorite topic of usage? What, what is the main thing that I convey to them when I sell the product? Yeah. Um, I, it's really situational. Yeah. Because people come in for different reasons. Yeah. But like my favorite way of helping people are the people that come in that want to get off drugs or have trouble sleeping because I have it out for big pharma and fucking I have it out for the motherfuckers. And by that, I mean by offering alternative modalities to the people that are primal and that work and that are not fucking poisoned. So, like, stuff like that, that's my main thing. Like, it's just teaching people that it, it really is medicine, you know? Right the fuck on, yeah. man. Right the fuck on. Yeah. Wow. yeah. So, so you, it sounds to me like the, that the main topic or the main impetus for you does have to do with medical concern. I, I mean, I know you sell to people who right, do recreational, mm-hmm. but, but mainly you like to... Tell people what medic, how they can benefit medically as according to what they're going to get it for. Is that correct? Right. Like, like a lot of people, a lot of people have trouble sleeping and it's like, dude, hello, smoke some damn weed, take right. a capsule, take some edibles, take some RSO, cook, right. cook up some shit with this crystal. Like there's so many things you can do rather than pop a pill and get all loopy and fuck up your liver. Yeah, I'm on uh, I'm on about four different types of medication right now, right? And I mm-hmm. requested I requested to uh, to get my milligrams uh, reduced significantly, and I'm mm-hmm. going to replace them with edibles from now on. That's beautiful. That's that's my next that's my next course of action. And I explained this to my uh, fiance, and she I said, look, this is going to be costly. And she said, look, if yeah. it stops you from having problems later on, because I was told by like a psychologist that the medication I'm taking is going to cause me to buy it, be uh, fat, impotent, and diabetic. Mm. And, it's going to cause all that? Yeah. Ooh. Yeah, eventually. Yeah, so you have to take more pills than, than the four that you're already taking right now. Right. And like, I don't know if it's like a blood pressure medication, but simple things like, like olive leaf extract help lower your blood blood pressure like right. there's so many things out there and it's like your doctor tells you you have to take these till the day you die and they they curse people like that yeah honestly that's true, mm-hmm. that's true. I, I i just told her i said look um you know it's, it's going to be costly but you know it's going to be worth the uh the time and effort we save as opposed to you know going to the hospital you can't put a price on your health right exactly thank you thank i you have adhd and instead of take, taking ritalin I just smoke a bunch of weed, and it chills me out. Yeah. And really? it makes me focus, yeah. and I'm actually able to get things done. And it, it slows my brain down enough to where I can think. I can... Mm. I've never been diagnosed with ADD, with ADD, but I'm pretty sure I have it. I'm pretty, mm-hmm. pretty sure I have it, and weed really calms me the fuck down. Yeah. yeah. It depends on what I'm smoking, too. I actually, I can't smoke certain sativas that are, like, above, like... I, like I couldn't smoke a 90% concentrate of sativa... Because I'll start, yeah. I'll start becoming schizophrenic. I've, yeah, I've, I've learned this by trial and error. So yeah, it's a the shame when it happens. Can be, it can be too cerebral for people with like anxiety and panic attacks yeah. and shit like that. Uh, can be. I replaced all my my. I have to. I have to segments to, with. Did you? With it, yeah, every single one of them. I tapered myself off of it now. That's what. Well, that's just, what I'm eventually going to be doing. Yeah, that's what I got planned. Nice. Nice. Well, listen. Good for you guys. I think that's all I got for you, unless unless you guys have anything for this young lady, for our C. Uh, hmm. 
if you could change anything in the world or locally, what would that be? What? <laughs> My <Mother. Yes. laughs> Nice. <laughs> Man. Of course, you can answer that any way you want. It's Mondo is so high right now. It's if fucking people could learn, If the people could learn to live in heart and mind coherent. Nice. Well said. Mind coherent. Well said. Thank you so much. Heart Thank and you. mind. Okay. Now that. Divine heart and mind coherent. That's so excellent. Thank that's you. That's so excellent. It was. Yeah, absolutely. One. Well put. Yeah. I got one. Now. Go ahead. Um. So what would you what would you be your, your advice to the people who are shy to step inside a dispensary? People that are shy that come in? Yeah, they kind of second guess on stepping in that doorway, you know, to better themselves. Oh, you can tell you can read people's energy even with their freaking mask on, they like walk in and they look lost. Yes. I'm like, "Hi." And they're like, don't look lost. Like I'm right here. I know there's a piece of plastic right here. And we all got shit covered, <laughs> and I'm speaking to you through a microphone, through a piece of plastic. But you can still come over here. I'm not going to bite you through the plastic. Hey, did you ever notice that those people are usually probably ten years younger than you? Yeah, or they're like old. Oh. Like I had this old you know couple. They're like either 70. really young or really old. If they've been yeah. in the bank, yeah. and the casino, yeah. they're fine. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> same shit. <laughs> I've seen all sorts of different kinds of people at the dispensary. Cool. Great. All right, ladies and gentlemen, uh, RC, thank you so much for being on our show. We really appreciate you, and we, like I said, we want to have you on in person at one time at least. Okay, so hopefully you'll accept our invite at least once. Uh, we understand, yeah, we understand you keep in touch with uh, Mondo, so you know that's how we'll keep in touch with you. And uh, as soon as you get those that edible lineup, man, let us know. We'll start advertising for you. Oh, yeah. Sounds good. Thank you. Thank you, you're Thank you for welcome. your time. You're very welcome. You have a great day. Remember, LOG in August, and also I'm going to Vegas for Psycho Las Vegas. Oh. All right, you little psycho. I'll go to LOG for oh. sure. Okay. <laughs> well, this okay. time tell Randy the new shit, all right? Yeah. All right. Talk to you later. All right. Later. Okay. All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the next segment of the Two Stone Dudes Podcast. It's your co-host, Ryan Castle, and myself and Ron the Nod are going to give uh, reviews, one on the movie Army of Army of the Dead that's on Netflix, along with a show that's called Toast of London. So, me and Rob get baked and watch these two shows. Uh, Jamie, have you heard of either one of these shows? I've heard of uh, Army of the Dead. Okay, did you watch it? No. Okay, Mondo? Watched it. You watched it. Which one did you watch? Army of the Dead. What did you think? Actually liked parts of it. Okay. All right, cool. I mean, with me, it's all about if I like it or not. Right, right. And it, it's like the plot value and the cinematic value and all that, well, it's not what it was about. Right. I found it, <laughs> I, you know what, I found it to be... Another cheesy wrestling movie. <laughs> yeah. Because Batista is in it. And yeah. he plays your typical yeah. cheesy yeah. wrestler, yeah. shoot him up, good guy type of role. Yeah. You know? Could have been uh, any one I of do, ten guys. Yeah. And I do like that his character was kind of skin. He was kind of slimy in a way. In a way. Yeah. It was sad. He was sketchy. Yeah. He was, was kind of sketchy in a way. You know what I mean? They all were kind of sketchy in their own little way. Especially that chick that was moving people in and out, and that fucking French chick, and she was like, yeah, sometimes they don't come out. And you're like, what the, what the fuck do you mean sometimes they don't come the fuck out? What's wrong with you, lady? Jesus. Anyhow, um, it was kind of hokey at times. There was a lot of, like, unneeded soft drama that went on, like, yeah. Uh, 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 oh, the whole uh, father-daughter. Yeah, moment. the whole father-daughter thing, I could have went, I could have done without that thing. How many movies has there been... The parent sibling thing. I mean, a lot. It's a lot, and it's always it's always the parent apologizing to the, the kid. Yeah, and it's like you know what, kid, fuck you. I did the best I could as a parent. You can kiss my ass. You're lucky yeah. you're alive. Right. You know, I just got you through the zombie apocalypse. A little appreciation <laughs> would be in fucking order. Thank you very much. <laughs> 
I'm telling you, I look at things just a little differently sometimes. Well, you know, <laughs> you know what? I told you ass to stay. It was about the effects for me and not about the plot. Because right. the plot was the plot typical shit. zombie week. Right, yeah. You know, now, shit. good zombie is Night of the Living Dead. Oh, yeah. That's it. That's the zombie movie. I don't yeah. need to see any others. Slow-moving zombies, I'm great with. Fast-moving zombies, I got a problem with. Um, that's why World War Z, first off, World War Z yeah. was a shit movie to me because it followed yeah. the book, it barely followed the book, barely, at yeah. all. You know what I mean? If you, have you read the book by Max Brooks? No. Okay, uh, I recommend, I have to recommend this book, it's called World War Z. I know who Max Brooks is. I started is, reading yeah. that in the psych ward. But I Did didn't, you? Yeah. No But I didn't shit. finish it. Oh man, it's a great read. They also have the Zombie Apocalypse Survival Guide. By Max Brooks. But mm. World War Z is a great book, and it's a shame that they fucked it up in the movies, because it could have been a great book. It's about people's accounts of the zombie apocalypse, what happened during it. You know what? I'm not going to go into it, because it's not what we're here to review. Yes. So, yeah, that's the way it should be. All right. So, ladies and gentlemen, uh, the next one we're going to review is uh, The Toast of London. Um, I'm going to let Rob get his take on The Toast of London, because Rob's the oh, one that man. got me into this shit. This little fuck, this British show, this English show, man, it, it, the actor is known as Stephen Toast. That's the character's name. He's just a, a, a fucking low budget actor and he just deals with so much bullshit. It's fucking funny. Through doing voiceovers, through his prostitution friends, <laughs> into his like gentle, private gentleman's club. It, it's insane. His agent gives him horrible information about his gigs, and she never reads the tabs. So there's always a fucking obstacle and obsolation within his fucking <laughs> jobs. It's, it's always something. Yeah, and then there's other actors that don't like his ass either, so he's got to deal with it. Yeah. It's hilarious. That's interesting. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. okay, so my take is pretty much the same thing. It's um this, this British guy who, I look comedy. at him, it is a dark comedy. Yeah. And I thought it was just going to be a regular comedy at first, but then it did some outrageous shit. Like, dude was diving out of a fucking window of a fucking second story house. Well, he was you know smashing I mean? a chick and. Yeah, he, he was knows smashing his. <laughs> the <laughs> prostitute that's married there, there's to this, another actor. Yeah, this character called Mr. Fetch, he's an actor. Um, his wife's a prostitute, and he's in complete denial of it. <laughs> so the main character, who's Toast, bangs her once in a while, but barely ever pays her, but. It's pretty sure she's a prostitute as well. Yeah. And all these other guys bang her as well. He's always like, oh, fucking dude. Ray Purchase. Like, yeah. fucking toast. Yeah, they're always in competition <laughs> with each other, too. This is a really good series that I recommend to anybody who um, is... Okay, I'm going to recommend it to people that are used to British comedy. Okay, because you'll get, you'll get your usual um, tip... I'm not going to say typical, but you'll get your usual zany comedy from the Brits... That you would get out of, like, Benny Hill and shit like that. You know what I mean? That's the kind of comedy you're going to get. Now, if you're not ready for this, if you've never seen um, Benny Hill, watch Benny Hill first. Then watch this movie. Okay? Or watch this series. So that way you'll have a little more of an understanding of what kind of comedy you're going to run into. Benny Hill is an old 70s, 80s comedy sketch right. type of thing. Um, and it really prepares you for what you're so about you to watch. So you liked it. With Absolutely. Words. Okay, you like it. Absolutely. Okay. I give... I, okay, let me give my total review of Army of the Dead. Army of the Dead, uh, out of five, uh, all right, I'll give it out of seven leaves on a pot plant, out of, on a pot leaf, um, or a pot plant, there's i uh, I'll give it five out of seven. That's pretty good. Okay, for toast, I'll get a six out of seven. Ooh. Okay. Because toast is pretty hot. The only reason I'll give toast a six is because there was an episode where the lady was butt-fucking him, and I didn't appreciate having to watch that. <laughs> so... Don't want to do that's what you pre- wanted. Don't care. Is that on Netflix also? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So, <laughs> I didn't appreciate having to watch that. Right. That caught me by surprise. Right. But you didn't mind the orgy. He walk, I didn't really watch walk, a lot of that shit. But he, there's an episode he walks into a straight orgy. Yeah, I know. Yeah. I know. Well, nothing that I watch. Yeah. Either. But the, uh, the the plug gusher got you, huh? Yeah. Yeah, that was horrible. <laughs> that was just horrible. Anyhow. It's a good show, though. It's funny. All right, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for listening to this segment. We'll catch you on the next one. Uh, We'll be back in about uh, five minutes of our time. Thank you very much.